They were starting from the first question, which is related with, uh, uh, with this uh, situation, 10 years of uh, Poland uh, in the European uh, Space Agency. How do you see uh, the difference or the growth of uh, Polish uh, space industry and uh, space organizations for this 10 years? Yeah. No, Poland has uh, developed very strongly in the last 10 years, so if I may compare it with a, with a person's evolution, uh, Poland, I think, is now in the teenager uh, stage of, uh, of development. Uh, and now we have to further invest to make sure that Poland becomes a strong uh, adult uh, and a strong player among the big ones uh, in, in space in, in Europe. But Poland has a lot of uh, excellence in, in science, uh, in uh, research, uh, uh, in uh, industrial com uh, uh, capabilities, uh, in the use of data, of space data. There are many uh, activities and companies where Poland is really good. So uh, Poland has really grown a lot in the last 10 years. Uh, of course, this is a process that doesn't stop now. It continues, and I really look forward to the next phase. Uh, as I understand, uh, the Poland is uh, now uh, in a... Uh, in eve of a, of a new phase, uh, what uh, it will be look like? Because uh, we are waiting for the decision of how much money it will be spent on uh, Polish defense. In the, uh, sorry, uh, on how much uh, money will be spent on the Polish uh, space industry? Uh, how do you see the chances for Polish uh, industry in the future? Yeah. No, it's uh, it, it's obvious. It's uh, clear. Uh, the investments uh, through ESA are going back to Polish industry. Uh, but they're going back in the same ratio. So that if uh, Poland puts 100 in, we give 100 back, minus, of course, the cost of, uh, of running ESA as, a, as an organization. So we guarantee to Polish industry that they will get contracts, of course, through an open competition with other companies, and, and on average, they will get the money back. So it's very simple. Uh, the amount of money put in is the amount of money going back into Polish industry. Uh, and there I can only say that uh, I know that the industry is good. They can win much more. Sometimes they are hitting a glass ceiling. They cannot go further up because uh, the subscriptions in ESA are limited. And that's why I really would like to encourage the Polish uh, government uh, to, to see the value of space uh, for many uh, parts of, of people, also of daily needs of people, uh, also to sustain the crisis we have right now, uh, for security, for, uh, but also agriculture, communication, navigation, for all these elements which are essential for daily life. Yes, uh, we need to become strong and independent, and space is one way of doing it. And also, to get out of the crisis, you need uh, to invest in future uh, innovation in, into the future, and space is the future. Uh, of course, when you talk about the crisis and uh, about Poland, uh, uh, we think also about the Ukraine. How the situation on the Ukraine, the war uh, between Russia and Ukraine, uh, affect the uh, European uh, Space Agency? Yeah. Well, let me first say thank you to the Polish people and Polish government for being so strong uh, in helping the Ukraine in this extremely difficult situation. And Polish uh, people also by inviting uh, people from Ukraine, uh, hosting them in their houses and helping them through this difficult time is, is huge and that is, uh, is very important. I know that Poland is taking a big, big uh, uh, part of this, uh, of this crisis uh, to help the Ukraine. So thank you really also from my side on, on that. So how can this help? What I hear uh, from different uh, countries is that the war, of course, is extremely unfortunate and is a big uh, disaster. But uh, in terms of the importance of space, it helps in the argumentation because it's obvious how important uh, security and space are connected. And investing in space technology, of course, is, is fundamental. Of course, the other question is how much money can I put uh, on the table now uh, during the crisis? But there I really think that the, the importance has to be recognized because this is like investing in the defense sector uh, where, of course, you need to defend your country. Space is, uh, is just as important and is uh, also uh, in addition, uh, inspirational and helping people uh, to have dreams, uh, to have uh, future projects and uh, come out of the crisis stronger uh, through investments in innovation and the future. And when, uh, when we talk about the future, I want to ask about the Ukraine because uh, it had a, a lot of experience in the space industry. Uh, do you see any capabilities of cooperation or, or maybe even uh, maybe in future Ukraine in the European uh, Space uh, Agency? 
Uh, the Ukraine has an interest to join the European Space Agency as a member, uh, but I should say, and Poland has uh, gone through this uh, uh, cycle before, it takes time to go to become a full member. So there are different stages, uh, uh, and uh, we are working now with Ukraine. Uh, because we know that they have very good uh, capabilities. Actually, we're using uh, Ukrainian industry and industrial capabilities already today, quite uh, importantly. Uh, and yes, uh, they are certainly very keen on joining ESA, and I'm discussing right now with my member states on uh, uh, stronger in uh, involvement of Ukraine, but this will be stepwise. They will not become a member tomorrow. This uh, is a process we have to go through. Uh, first of all, of course, the, the war situation is, uh, needs to be uh, seen what, uh, until this ends, but then, of course, we need to go through an evolution process, a stepwise approach to become a future member. Okay, and we are talking about the war, so we should uh, talk about the other side. So uh, how Russia uh, and uh, politics uh, against Russia affects uh, the uh, European Space Agency? Because there was a lot of uh, very important programs uh, with the support of uh, industry or uh, or. Uh, uh, other uh, areas uh, from the Russia, uh, how it goes now? Yeah. No, this is uh, something where we are affected uh, quite significantly. Uh, in fact, it's very similar to the energy crisis we see in Europe, uh, where we had a dependency on gas uh, from Russia. And now uh, we also had a dependency on in space uh, from Russia. Uh, we had big programs uh, like the launch of uh, Soyuz rockets, uh, Russian Soyuz rockets from Kourou, uh, which have stopped. Uh, we have uh, ExoMars, which is a big uh, uh, program, a rover that goes to Mars, uh, which we have implemented with Russia for the last uh, 10 years. We were ready to launch um, in, uh, in October. Uh, we could not uh, launch uh, because of, uh, we stopped the cooperation. So we have really terminated this cooperation with Russia, but also on smaller uh, elements like components, materials, uh, technologies, uh, where we had a lot of uh, interaction with Russia. All this is terminated. Like the only exception is the space station because there we need to uh, rely on each other. Uh, but this also means that uh, uh, instead of Russia, we need now more European uh, independence and autonomy. And this is part of my package in the ministerial conference uh, uh, this month, uh, where we uh, want to ensure that Europe is strong, resilient, autonomous, with its own capability. We can do it, we have it, but we need to put it together. And this is uh, extremely important, especially in light of the crisis in front of us. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think, how long you will have to work to uh, have the same level of capabilities which you had in cooperation with, with the Russia? Uh, we can do it tomorrow. It's a matter of investments uh, that need to be made. We have the, the capability uh, and uh, we need to build, uh, of course, some of it needs to be developed, but we do have uh, the building blocks uh, to do that. So this is really the decision at the ministerial on the 22nd, 23rd of November, which uh, makes this possible.